Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. I hope everybody at home is doing great. I have another review for you guys. I'm super excited about this one. This is a 1971 film directed by Jerry Schatzberg, starring Al Pacino and Kitty Wynn. This is The Panic in Needle Park, a staple of 1970s realist cinema. I'm super excited about this film. I have been meaning to watch it for a very long time, and I finally got around to watching it last weekend. I'm super excited about this one. I've been meaning to watch this movie for a very long time. I never really got around to it. I'm a huge fan of the 1970s cinema. I'm a huge fan of New York cinema, and I'm a huge fan of Al Pacino. So naturally, I would love this film. And while I didn't love it, I did like it quite a bit. And I'll explain why in a second. But first, let me just explain why I watched this movie in the first place. So Criterion, the channel, uh, the streaming service that I use the most, is they ended their whole big animation, art, art house animation section and they started with a new one called New York Stories that has like a bunch of classic films like Do the Right Thing and The Apartment and uh, Just Another Girl on the IRT, which I've been meaning to watch and I will. And I, and I found The Panic at Needle Park there, The Panic in Needle Park, I should say. And I, I just finally got around to watching it and I really enjoyed it. I really did. I thought it was a pretty well-made movie. I thought there were some aspects of it that were extraordinary. I thought there were aspects of it that needed a lot of work. I think the strongest aspects of it are its personality, its style, and the weakest aspects are the script. So I'll get into why right now. So for those of you who haven't seen The Panic in Needle Park, this is essentially what it's about. It's about these two, uh, this couple, these this man and this woman, Bobby and Helen who embark on this journey of drug usage and drug dealing. And essentially, Bobby is a drug dealer, and he convinces Helen to start using drugs and using heroin. And it turns into her pushing heroin. It turns into her uh, de dealing in prostitution to pay for the heroin. And at the end of the movie, Helen outs Bobby for dealing for a major crime boss. And he goes to prison and he eventually gets out and they walk together back home. That's essentially the film. Is this whole expedition of these two characters' descent into indecency and madness because of their drugs, drug usage. It's a very anti-drug film. It's a very anti, it's a very pro-New York film. And I'll get into more of that later. But in theory, it's just a very strong anti-drug movie. It reminded me a lot of Requiem for a Dream. It reminded me a lot of Days of Wine and Roses. And especially Days of Wine and Roses. And I'll get into more why, but for now, let's just pop out the notebook and let's start going into the details of this movie. So the film opens on Kitty Wynn playing Helen. And Helen is this very innocent, very young woman who hasn't ever done drugs before besides like marijuana. And she is dating this man named Marco who takes drugs from Bobby. And Bobby and she... The film opens on her coming back home after having had an abortion. Which, by the way, that's never really made clear. So the weakest part of the movie is the... One, one of the weakest parts of the movie, right off the bat, is the character introductions are very, very weak. The character introductions are... They don't, they don't say much about the person. They don't say much about what they want, who they are. All it really tells us is that these characters exist in this world. And that's pretty much it. It doesn't tell us anything about who they are or what they want. It doesn't even say in any sort of implicit or explicit way that Helen got an abortion, I don't think. Unless I missed something. But... 
right off the bat, we just see... There are some aspects of it that I do like. Like, Helen is in this very crowded uh, subway. And I think it shows how claustrophobic her life is about to become. How compact it's about to become. How everything is going to start pressuring in on her. But... I mean, besides that, it doesn't show us too much about who they are, really, and what they want, and what type of person they are. I mean, Helen as a whole really doesn't have too much of a character, and I'll get into that more later. Helen is is very um, non, non-specific at the beginning of the film, as is Bobby. Bobby, Marco, and Hotch, and Helen... They're all very non-specific in their character introductions. It gets better as the movie goes on. We get a sense of who they are, what they want, why they want it, and it makes sense. But when we first see them, it's just very unspecific and inexplained. It has a weak opening in general, and the opening is probably one of my least favorite parts of the movie. But one thing I will say about the opening and the whole film at large is that it feels so incredibly human. It feels so incredibly touching and so incredibly true and honest. There's no lies being told to you about this film. It's just a very honest, very true, very passionate film throughout. And the characters are so incredibly honest and so incredibly passionate about who they are. They're so unabashedly themselves. It's a beautiful thing to watch, honestly. It's a beautiful thing to watch. And with that character thing comes Al Pacino. Al Pacino is probably my favorite part of this movie because he is so fucking funny and charismatic and just likable, immediately likable. 